Better communities happened yesterday, and um, I believe there's a couple, there's two pictures there, and they met at San Fernando Cathedral right downtown, and we were able to take, I believe, clothing and food and, and blessings of that, and I, I want to thank publicly right now, um, B and Juan, amen, they've, they've led that, along with Annabelle, three of our Living Faith people, let's give them a big hand, and they represented us well, and I believe about 200 people, 250 people were served. Isn't that amazing? Um, and so God is still needing to reach people and touch people and help people. And this, this organization that we partnered with for this Saturday does exactly that. And we can reach even more people because we're mobile in that. Isn't that good? Yes. Amen. And God is doing extraordinary things at Living Faith Church. We want to welcome our first time guest and just thank you for coming. And we're honored that you're here. And uh, we want to make sure that you go by our welcome table. There will be a, a gift for you, and it's valued probably at about $200. You want to make sure you get one of those? <laughs> that much in heaven, right? Yeah. But it's, it's a gift that we have for you. Again, we're honored that you would come and you'd be part of our, um, our church family today. We're Living Faith Church, faith that you can see as we gather, grow, and go, right? And let's welcome our online audience. Come on live on the air, Facebook, uh, YouTube. Our website, you're on the screen right now, and we're so grateful that you're part of Living Faith Church. Say hello to our friend in North Carolina. She's so faithful. We're grateful for her. Elaine, God bless you as you watch every week, and uh, you're a blessing. Do you have your message notes? The message notes are going to be dropped down right there um, online, but if you need your message notes, raise your hand, and I, we have a lady, but you got to raise your hand high. We have a precious lady over here, and I think she's going to... Get her? Yeah, somebody's going to get her, but she's over here. Keep your hand up. Anybody on this side? 100%, but we'll wait. They'll, they'll serve her. They already served her. Okay, good. Praise God for that. They're nodding, and that's a good thing. Do you have your, me your, your messengers as we go on? We're in our discipleship series, Disciple University. And, and the third series, it's our heart and our passion that we would be genuine followers of Jesus. And how many know that healthy people grow? And uh, you keep growing. Even as you age, you grow. You're not the same man if you're in your 20s. If you were in your 20s and now that you're in your 40s, how many know you're not the same guy that you were in your 20s? A teenager in this room, if you're 16, 17 years old, you're probably not the same guy that you were when you were eight years old, right? Of course you're not. Or that something would they take you to the doctor maybe because something wasn't happening. But you're meant to grow spiritually the same way as you grow in the natural. You grow older, you grow wiser. You're not in pre-K anymore, you're in college and you're, you're doing the things for God. So God wants to allow those things to happen from your head to your heart to your hands today. And so we need to pray. Let's pray today. Amen. Fa Father, we thank you that we would be uh, the people of God during these 21 days of prayer and fasting. We ordain ourselves to add more of God. And there would be deletions of things like maybe food or media or those things that we set aside to focus in on you. This Sunday, today, is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice in it today, Father, as you find followers here that are true, that are genuine, that are authentic warriors for your kingdom today. Thank you, God, that we may have done great things on this earth, but you have more for us to do as we hear the word of God and we obey it. In the mighty name of Jesus, all of God's children say... Amen. To him be the glory. Amen. And so we want to look more like Jesus in the world. Would you recognize that with me today? And that, that's being God's child. So the kickoff scripture that we have today is Mark chapter 12. By the way, check in right now quickly on your social media, Living Faith SA, if you could, and uh, take a selfie of yourself. I'll like it. Follow us, Living Faith SA, on all of our, 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 our uh, media uh, and that's great, too. Thank you for reminding me to do that today. All right. Mark chapter 12, verse 30. The disciples uh, Bible says this. And you shall love the Lord your God with your whole heart, with your whole soul, with your whole mind and with your whole strength. I love that scripture, but I think we need to declare it out loud as we lay our hand on your heart this morning today. And so from our head to our heart, to our hands, and we put our hands on our heart as an allegiance to Jesus today, allegiance to God, the, 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 the one, the king of the universe, as brother, uh, as, as Pastor Diaz even so said today. Thank you, Father. So we say this together. You will, and you shall love the Lord your God with your whole, on three, one, two, three. And you shall love the Lord your God with your whole heart, your whole soul, and your whole strength today in the name of Jesus. In other words, Jesus wants the totality of your being today to be 
that he is in charge today. That everything that you not only say out of your mouth, that you'll follow through, that you'll do it in the name of God today, right? You can demonstrate by your actions that you live for the Lord today. And so thank God we're not only going to say it, we're going to obey it, right? We're not only going to say it, we're going to do what we're going to do today in the name of the Lord today. So the first principle that you have right there in your outline is this. Discipleship begins with your, somebody say head. Head. It's a change that happens. I know who Christ is and I make a decision to follow him. I'm going to follow through now that it's in my head. I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk and I'm going to be part of of what Jesus wants me to be today. And so there's, how many know there's a big intersection between your head and your heart? And some of you guys that are real smart in this room, they say it's what, 12 inches? Or some, somewhere around there, right? Some of us it's five, amen, maybe a little bit closer. But we, we have a little bit of a distance from our head to our heart till it gets in. But it has to begin here in the eye gate, in the mind gate today that we follow Jesus. I'm so, gr- I'm, I'm so glad today that I didn't initiate following Jesus. He came after us. And because he initiates, he knows where he's going. Because he's calling you today, mom, dad, today, uh, parent. He's calling you. He knows where to take you. You can follow his lead and you're not going to get lost today. So in Matthew, the great chapter that we just saw Matthew portrayed on the screen, Matthew 419, the, the passion edition of the Bible says, Jesus called out to them. He said, come. Follow me and I will transform you into men and women who can catch people for God, right? And so, well, these guys, you know, 2,000 years ago, they were losers. You know, they were fishermen. They didn't have any money. Look at me. I got some bank and I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I have this talent. No, the, these men that Jesus called, they were self-sufficient. They were, they were journeymen, yes. They had jobs that probably that the industry needed. And we know about the sons of Zebedee. They had a big fishing company, and so they were wealthy enough um, to supply work for other people, not only themselves. And so these men, Matthew, wore the best of the best. He was a corrupt tax. So they all had money. But when they left that, it wasn't because they didn't have anything to do. They were already winners in the world, and God proved them and said, now you're going to be a winner for me. Isn't it interesting that God will use people that are not standing still, but he uses people, I've noticed, that are already busy. They're already doing something. They're already green light in life, right? And and so they're active in the things of God, and that's attraction comes to that person and discipleship. Are y'all here this morning? Because I I sure ain't getting any help. Choir, would y'all help me out today? Because y'all really need to sing a little bit louder when I'm saying the right thing. Maybe they're going to go, uh-huh, at the very end, right, everybody? Or they'll say amen for you because y'all, y'all ain't bringing it today. I, I'm so grateful that we weren't programmed in our heads because Adam, when he was made the first of creation, he could have been dialed in by Jesus. Okay, you're going to follow me. I'm going to put it in your DNA that you're just going to follow me. You must follow me, Adam. And, you know, he gave him a choice. Eat from any tree that you want. There's abundance, but leave that tree over there alone. That's the choice you have to make. But, but let me have a relationship with you, Adam. And Adam knew immediately when he'd messed up with Eve, la tonta, right? <laughs> that it took her off. And, 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 and he didn't. He, he knew exactly because of the choice that he made. Today, God gives you a choice to be in relationship with him today. Right, everybody? You think about following the leader when you were a kid. You had to follow the leader. You had to mimic them. You had to do everything that they did in front of you. And Jesus is asking you to follow him, mimic Jesus, do what he would do. Well, how do I know what he's doing? He's invisible. No, you can read the word of God every day. We can change by that today. Jesus is out in front. Keep your focus on him. If we take him on the eye, if we take our eyes off him and put him on the eyes of this world, we get a little bit foggy. We little get a little bit off. But if we keep him on Jesus, we're going to know the right thing to do, the right thing to day, say today. So today I, I choose to surrender my will to his. Yeah. And today I leave my self ambitions behind and my way of life behind and I walk with my low, my, my goal is to no longer please me. I have to please Jesus. Would you join me in that today? Right, everybody? Yeah, the, the mission of the church doesn't change. We believe that disciples know how to reproduce themselves also. A disciple cannot be a disciple, not unless he reproduces himself today. 
begin first in your home today. We believe the mission of the church is still to seek and save the lost, right? We believe that di- disciples know how to fish. All right. Come on, y'all. I like, now you got my attention, Pastor. I love to fish. You fish for men. You fish for, for women. Amen. You exercise your faith just like you do these 21 days. You're going to lose weight. You resolve to go back to goals, Jim. <laughs> Go to the mighty gym of the Lord today, amen, and work your faith. Get stronger in the things of God, amen. Uh, You need to be an active player. Today when the mighty Dallas Cowboys play and annihilate and spank, amen, the 49ers. Y'all like that, right? Y'all talk like y'all, this is like a bar, amen. I could use some bar words in here. (laughs) Y'all clap for anything, right? (laughs) I worry about you guys, right? (laughs) Uh, they say, I'm worried about you, Pastor, for saying that. <laughs> you got to be an active player. There's no bench players, no second stringers. Everyone is meant to play. Everyone's meant to be a disciple and be active in their faith. When I get to heaven, I, I don't want... Uh, 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 Nava, let me... Okay, he's, he's here. He's, he made it. Okay, let's look. Okay, the next thing. Let's get the rewards. Well, all he did was, uh, all he did was get saved. He got the fire insurance. Okay, Nava, you're going to go off to pre-K for heaven, pre-K for H, pre-K for heaven, because you're going to have to learn on how to take, you know, you're going to have to take those six classes on how to be a better Christian, what you do with your talents and your reward, because you're going to still keep learning and you're going to still need a relationship in heaven. I I don't want to go to pre-K for H, (laughs) for heaven. I want to go where he goes, you know what, the reward, man, uh, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into all the rewards that you have. But that's because I'm following Jesus now, and, and I don't retire. Give me a good amen. There is no retirement in the Bible, right, everybody? And so the revelation of Jesus leads us to a dedication with our lives to Him. It impacts the way I think. I used to think like this. Now I'm thinking different. I love Jerry. He alluded to that. And, and Leonard also, as these men of God stood up and says, that used to be my problem. Of course we're not perfect. No man is. No woman is in this room or no person is. But, but there's a more of a development of godliness in your life today. And we're stronger. We advance in the things of God. Right, everybody? You show me Pinterest, Instagram, they always have these uh, scriptures and they're so peaceful. And they'll put challenging scriptures with this meadow or these deer or these flowers. And they'll, you know, I've even seen them and I put them on screensavers and all that. And we like those verses, but sometimes the verses that we look at, they're not meant to be so tranquil. They're not meant to be so peaceful and bring us that way of comfort on this earth. They're meant to challenge our faith. They're meant to move us, amen? And and they're not the whole story. And so Jesus shared the process of that refrigerator magnet scripture that you may have, that you need to put on your refrigerator, on the mirror every time you look at your, your, you know, you're wiping your eyes clean in the morning. And it says this in Luke chapter 23. And Jesus continued to say them. He'd already challenged them. And he said this to all of them. If anyone wants to be my follower you got to stop thinking about yourself and what you want. You must be willing to carry the cross that is given to you. Somebody shout, every day. day. That includes tomorrow. That includes the weekend. That includes when, again, no one's watching Nava, amen, to follow me. And any one of you who tries to save his life, you're going to lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will save it. There are benefits in following Jesus, right? But, but it, it takes a risk. It, it's worth noting that for you, the whole world, if you gain it for yourself, it, it will be destroyed or lost. And people take up in their cross today and they think, well, I'm taking up my cross. It's in that you think you misinterpret. It's the marriage I'm in. You know, I'm married to him. That's my cross. I got to bear it. It's the job I have. Oh, the, the job. They, dis, they, did, they don't like me. I'm in the mailroom now, and I started out being the VP, and it's, the, it, it's my cross. To be, or it's even a sickness. Oh, you know, oh, they even gave it name. You know, it's uh, Norma. Oh, Norma's acting up today. Must be a storm. It's the cross that I bear. Sorry if your name's Norma today, right? 
And, and that's not what Jesus meant about the cross that you would bear, right? It, that's not, I have to carry my cross. It, Jesus meant something that violence and trouble and persecution is going to follow you when he told those disciples 2,000 years ago, this is what's going to happen to you. No wonder they all hid when Jesus died. I, I can see them when Jesus said this. Uh, he's just speaking. You know how he is on Sunday morning. He's going to take, you know, um, he's going to just talk and talk. And it's just probably thought he was just saying something. But then he really carried his cross. He picked up the cross and he took it to Golgotha's hill. And they all ran away from him when they saw what he said was true. And they, you know what? We're going to have to do this one day. And they all did. The disciples did exactly what happened to him happened to them in their lives today. They, they probably, you know, this wouldn't go over. Carry your cross and die. I don't think that's a good bumper sticker to have for Living Faith and come to Living Faith Church. Do you all think that? It's not good marketing, right? And the cross turned into this beautiful now um, instrument or symbol that we put around our necks. And it's a point of redemption. That's what Jesus does. He makes something of a curse, something beautiful. He makes your curse life into something that's so beautiful now. Because once I was blind, but now I see. And only Jesus can do that. To press in a little bit more about that brutal cross. When Jesus carried it, he carried it through the streets. And then... And not only did the Romans, as they crucified him, they were so cruel at that moment. They said, this is your instrument of death. This is your execution chair. This is the, 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 the chair that's going to fry you. But I, I really want you to now, you carry it. Carry your death instrument. And then when you, we're going to lay you down, and we're going to strip all your clothes off you, and you're going to hang naked in front of even your mother. We serve a Savior that was totally humiliated in front of his mother. And that's why we give our total allegiance to him. Amen. How could we not? And the last time I looked, nobody's beating us. No one's carrying it. Maybe we get a little bit of persecution, but nothing like our Jesus or our fathers of the faith faced in their lives. So you need to resolve right now in your mind, because that's where it begins. No matter what, I've made up my mind. I'm going to follow Jesus. No matter what, I'm going to get it in my head. I will follow Jesus. And that's where you're, you're even saying tomorrow, you know what? He's the boss. He's in charge. I'm resolving right now. He's my leader. There's an, inter there's an intersection between the head, the heart, and the hands. But it begins in the head today. And so I realize that today that your love may, may, may not be true for Jesus. It may not be dedicated fully. But if it's genuine, if it's pursuing, God can work a lot right now. God can do something in your life. It's evident in your growth today. Thank God for it today. And as I look around living faith today, as I look around the people of faith today, and I'm making eye contact with everybody, everybody, there you go, there you go, and even you today. Man, I see growing people. I see people that love God, that got it into their head, and now it's into their heart, which leads me to my second point. Discipleship involves, somebody say heart. It's a change of heart. A genuine disciple is being changed by Christ. Jesus changes their heart. I could preach to you, and sometimes I have, God forgive me, thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not do this, thou shall not do this, and y'all wicked sinners, y'all are going to hell tomorrow because of all the things that you've done. Ha! And you take the H off of L, and you take, you know, and stuff like that. And I'm preaching to the hell. <laughs> and that's okay. There's those type of churches. We just ha don't happen to be one. Don't get mad. They're, they're, you, I can send you to a church if you really like to get beat up every Sunday. I know a lot of them, okay? <laughs> but what if I do this? Hey, you know, you're upset. You're discouraged. You're up mad. Hey, wh why don't you go just go talk to Jesus about that situation, about why you're angry? Like Leonard Ziegler that sat in a circle with me, eyeball to eyeball. I wasn't at a pulpit, but we all sat. And he, can, he said, you know what, guys, I need to work on my anger. Months ago, he was that transparent. And I said, man, we're just like you. You were just brave enough to admit it. So we all cried out to God as men, God, save us from our anger. We don't want to be angry men. 
We want to be men that are meek and men that are pure of heart, men that forgive, men that love. We want to be that way, Lord. And God began to change us. Amen. Yeah, God began to change us. You know what I'm thinking, Leonard? Leonard probably was walking in that farm that he has, and he was walking out there, and, you know, he's probably dealing with things. Or, and God came to him and said, you know what, man? I, I got angry, God. And God whispered to him, said, you know what? You got angry because of this, didn't you? Yes, Lord. And you got angry maybe because of this frustration didn't work out for you. Yes, Lord. Like we all have had that. And if we just, he had a moment where Jesus taught him and he learned of Jesus because Jesus taught him what it meant to be righteous but not righteous in his anger. What it meant to live right for God. And God began to change him. Amen. And God changes us. Dedication to Christ leads to personal transformation. But it begins in the heart, right? Amen. Along with a head decision. That's where your heart's at. It's going to change your affections. It's going to change your love, your, your, what, what your commitments are, what your priorities are. This is where I used to be committed. And that's why the Bible says this. John the Baptist was preaching to a bunch of religious people one time. They were good, amen, but they were good on the outside. And he said, change your hearts and show by the way that you live that you have changed. Thank you, guys. One of y'all helped me out then. I walk up to the travel agent. And I you say, I'm Mario Nava, the company jet, Southwest Airlines. I'm Mario Nava, and I got a ticket to Houston. They're going to say, show me some proof. Identify that you're Mario Nava. So I got to put out my ID, show my driver's license, whatever else, and I got to show them. Because that ticket agent wants to identify me as the person that I say that I am. Ah, oh, can you smell it again? You know where I'm going, right? <laughs> That means that a real disciple, they're not only going to say who they are, they're gonna, their actions and their deeds are going to back it up. I'm identifying with Jesus and I look like him, right? Yeah, thank God for it. And, and so the more that we experience Jesus and we're with him, the greater our lives begin to change and our behavior changes and our conduct changes and things just change. We're not only pure on the outside, but we're pure on the inside, right? And so a heart pure person, amen, today, we see that in God's scripture today. It makes us part of a church family, amen. It makes us part, a, 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 pure, a person with a pure heart, they'll, they'll, oh man, the flowers just look better, right? <laughs> the, God, the backyard even looks better, amen. A person with a pure heart, they'll see the church as, as just a place. They won't get mad at people in the church, right? They won't get upset because they have a pure heart, right, everybody? They'll, they'll see it within their family, Today, they'll see God in the scriptures that, God, I thank you for the word of God now because of the purity of heart. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, let's read this together. It's short, sweet. It's only one sentence. Can you read this together on three? Okay, one, two, three. Blessed are the pure in heart. Man, the greatest intimacy ever. More than you could ever imagine. <laughs> you thought it was in the bedroom, but the greatest intimacy that you could ever have is, is with God. In the Chosen series, they're on uh, uh, season three now. And um, this one was in season two, the clip that we saw earlier. And he picks, Jesus picks the most unlikely people uh, to follow him in, in the episodes. He picks, you know, of course, they show Peter that's hot-headed, always fighting. And, you know, and Jesus tells him. But when he picks Matthew, it's interesting about this man. Matthew is portrayed as this man that is autistic before they diagnosed it in our age. <laughs> and it, there's no medication, but there's something different about. But didn't Jesus come, not for the righteous, but for those that were sick, those that were displaced? And, and I have to believe, of course, like Peter that is so outstanding, that there was probably something wrong with each of the disciples, just like there's something wrong with each of us. <laughs> And God still uses us. And it's to his glory. How could you use them, Lord? And he says, I will use them and they'll change the world. And they surely did. I remember in the episode, it's interesting, when, uh, when, when, they, find, when they find Matthew at the tax collector's booth. And it's, they've already selected most of them. And Matthew's one of the last ones to come along in the episode. And Peter, you know, with his big mouth, comes up and he says, uh, Jesus says, Matthew, son of a whatever his name, Matthias. Follow me. And uh, Peter goes, Jesus, do you know what he is? 
<laughs> Do you know what he's done? He's different than all of us. And he goes, and you're not? He said, no, 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 but he, he's way different. Meaning he took money from us and he, 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 he was brought, he was on, under, you know, uh, in the syndicate and he's uh, organized crime. Uh, you know, he's in the mafia. You don't want that guy. He's a stool pigeon for the Romans. He's a sellout. And you know what, what Jesus told him? He said, you better get used to different. You better get used to different. <laughs> and so as the church comes back, you've got to be crazy. What are you saying that for? As the church comes back, either we do it this way or however we do it, amen, let's get used to different. They don't all have to look like us. They don't all have to be like us. And there's a process of discipleship. There are people that get saved after they read the word of God. There are people that come to Christ after they sit with you. And they don't have to know it all. Amen. Let's get used to being, having different people around us as we reach people today. Amen. And it accurately resembles what it is to follow Jesus in your heart today. The Bible says this in Matthew 6, 21. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. And Jesus wasn't against you having material things because that's necessary. Thank God you drove in a car today. Most of us in this room, right? And it had heat and it, 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 your home had heat last night. And that's it. But Jesus did have big time thoughts about this. He says, is your loyalty more towards materialism or is it towards me? Don't sell me out for the things of this earth because I want to be first place. In other words, use all the material assets that you have and all the giftings that you have and give them to God so God can use them as a direct paymaster for himself. Right, everybody? The disciples in Jesus' time were selfish. They were arrogant. They were rude at times. They were clueless and they were immature, just like us. Do you remember Peter after being in Bible college for three years? You know what he did? Jesus told him what he was going to do. So if Jesus would have told me what I was going to do, I, I think I would have prepared a bulkhead. I ain't going to do that now. Jesus warned me I was going to do that. But I think I would have been a little bit smarter than Peter. And I would have not denied Jesus three times after he told me I was going to deny him. I think I would have said, whoa, 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 hold up. Because you told me, Master, I love you so much. I'm not going to do that. Please pray for me that I don't do that. Peter didn't do any, well, deny him once, deny him twice. There was one, the very, the very first time that he denied Jesus, he, after three years of Bible college, holiness, and holy school, they came up to him in the book of Matthew, the denial part there, and they said, hey, weren't you with Jesus? Jesus was getting all beat up, you know, getting whipped off to the side and kind of looking at him, and he said, then they come up, weren't you with Jesus? You were one of his guys, weren't you? And you know, what, do you know what Peter said immediately so he could disassociate himself? He said, I'll show them that I wasn't with him. I wasn't with that blankety blank, 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 blank guy. Okay. <laughs> you weren't. I can tell by the way you speak. And then he denied him again. And then he denied him again. And then the rooster crowed. <laughs> they were just like us. They were selfish, they were sinful, and they had struggles. Jesus did not choose a spiritual, spiritual giants to follow him. He chose people just like you and me. And so we all qualify to follow Jesus. And as you follow Jesus with your heart, he will take things off you. He will add things to you. He will add gifts to you, the gifts of the Spirit. But he'll also prune you, and the pruning hurts, right? So you can grow. And so the, the, the thought is today that from your head to your heart to your hands, things change. And not, not, not that we follow Jesus just with our head and not only with our hearts, but today we follow him with our hands. Right, everybody? And so we follow Jesus with our hands, which leads me to the fill in the blank. And you're set free right now. Discipleship involves somebody shout hands. There's a change. You're on the mission of Christ now. And you're digging deep and you're doing something that used to be things of sin with your hands. Now they're holy and they're sacrificed. You have a clean heart, clean hands today. We no longer live for ourselves. Amen? Amen. Follow Jesus with your head. It moves to your heart and then it changes you and leaves your hand. There's revelation. There's dedication. And somebody shout transformation. transformation. Being a disciple is more than going to church on Sunday morning. 
It's led by God's design. You follow Jesus, it's more than going to church, giving an offering, gaining Bible knowledge, being nice to people, especially that sit on the front row with you. Amen. You, you do more. Every disciple should participate in the kingdom of God and the ways with their hands and be active in the things of God. Well, I'm getting a little bit, you know, older. Well, there's no retirement in the Bible. You're here in church. Everyone can do something. John Sprinkle, our first elder many years ago, when he drove up onto the property, he drove up on a pickup truck. We were in the student center at that time remodeling, and he was looking for a church. And I noticed something interesting about John. He, he was just, um, he, he was hungry for God. He was hungry for God. And he got older. And he became the elder of the church, the first elder of living faith. And then when we used to do this, but then it got a little bit, just, we shouldn't have done it probably because people got mad that they weren't that. John Sprinkle became a living faith member of the year. <laughs> and whatever year it was. And he got that award because he was so outstanding. And I don't think we gave that word out. Maybe, again, y'all tell me if I did. Maybe I missed somebody. Don't get mad at me. But we just never did it again because, you know, people, why wasn't I chosen? You know, again, we're dealing with immature people. We need to be disciples, right? <laughs> and then John Sprinkle got to the point where he drove his little car, got it from a truck. He got into a little Toyota, and he started running into people in our parking. Not, he started running into cars. Into our parking lot. So John couldn't drive anymore. And if you hit your car, I'm sorry. <laughs> and he would have to get a ride and come to church. And then John Sprinkle got to the point that all he couldn't do was he had to stay home. And he had to become a prayer warrior at home. And the day came that he was bedridden. And the day came that he went to heaven. But John Sprinkle stayed active in his faith no matter how mature and how older he got in this body that's frail. Amen. And so he participated in the things of God. It impacts the way that you serve when you follow Jesus. It impacts that I can't stay still. The church needs something right now. I, I have to act upon it. I got to act upon my neighbor. My neighbor needs something right now. They're hurting. I got to act upon the communities that we have that we feel love in their ha the, the, the community needs to be fed. And so we have to do something we serve God with our abilities, with our passions, and with our skills today. There's some coaching from the Word of God that the Apostle Paul, which was probably the greatest coach of them all on how he raised up disciples. In Romans chapter 10, he was a lot like us. Verse 13, he says this, our final scripture, right, everybody? So you must be glad, amen, that you're in the house of God. And all who call upon the name of the Lord, you see, will be saved. And so... How can they call upon somebody that they haven't believed in him? And how will they believe in him if they do not hear? And how will they hear if someone's not announcing it to them? How are the precious children of Living Faith Church going to hear if no one's there? And thank God for the teacher there. How will the nursery worker take care? Of, how will the nursery and the baby take care if a nursery worker's not there loving the children and loving the babies that are set apart? How will our young people hear the word of Jesus if no one's announcing it to them? How, how will they hear? How, how will they hear this today? There's a slide I have. And um, this man uh, that's there with his bride, his name's Al Braca. And Al um, was uh, uh, married to Janine probably for close to 50 years and he worked at um, a brokerage firm, firm uh, during 9-11 in the Twin Towers the first Twin Tower that got struck and here's what the backstory is about Al before they wrote the book on him <laughs> he um, worked for this brokerage firm and um, they all knew that he was a dedicated man he was an elder in his church Calvary Church in New York City and so when they would ask him to go hang out at the bars and the things that after you get your paycheck, what happens at times, he wouldn't go. And quickly he got the name of Rev. They would call him Rev. Hey, Rev. You know. And so they would tease him. One of his birthdays, they gave him a surprise birthday cake. And they put a nasty image of a, a body part on there of a female. And he pushed it away. And they all laughed. 
But one time when he came in, the story goes, which is true, they had pornographic, somebody had uploaded pornographic, pornographic images onto his uh, computer in front of him. And they all thought it was funny and they all laughed at him. But privately, during these years while he worked at this brokerage firm, they would come to him during their crisis. Um, they would come to him privately and say, pray for me. Um, man, I, I, my marriage is suffering and this is going on in my home. And he would lead people to Christ and of course they would fall off and they would tease him later. He and Janine, as elders of their church, he hated working there, but he knew that God had called them there to work at that brokerage firm. And they spent hours interceding and praying for their, his fellow peers that worked with him. He would cry out to God, Lord, help them to turn from their greed. Lord, help them to turn from their, 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 their adultery that they're committing with each other. Lord, help them, Lord. Help them to see the light of Jesus and touch their lives. They would pray and pray this for them every day. So September 11th came, and he left as usual. And he went up, and he, he was looking out the window, and he, he was just, uh, he had a, 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 a great view of the city from his window on the 105th floor. And all of a sudden, he hears this big explosion below him. And um, they all run towards the window, and they can't really see anything at that point, but they, the building shook, of course, and it was the first plane that had flown in, as we know. And people thought, it was a bomb, or how can we get out? And they realized they couldn't get out, so they all waited on their floor. And Al knew um, what was taking place because smoke started rising, and the, the floor started getting hotter. And he stood up on his desk, and he says, I'm going to heaven today. Who's going to follow me? Who's going to be with me to go to heaven? And those terrified individuals that were at the windows hoping that somebody would come rescue them from a window on the 105th floor, they weren't coming. They couldn't get to them. And they gathered around Al's desk and he led them to Jesus. He said, will you trust Jesus to save you from your sins? Will you trust Jesus to fill your heart? Would you, would you confess your sins to Jesus? And he led people to Jesus. Well, how do you know all this happened? Well, what was happening at that very moment, people were starting to send emails out. People got through on the phone lines and were saying, there's Al Broca is leading people to Christ and he's praying right now for us. And I'm going to be in heaven soon because Al just introduced me to Jesus. Yeah. It goes that... Um, Al, after he led people to Christ and people were hunkering down because the smoke was getting um, so thick and the floor was getting so hot and he, they were doing anything that they could. And, um, he calls, he can't get through to his wife, Janine, he can't get through to her. So he calls Zero and an MCI operator answers and he says this to her. He says, um, hey, tell my wife and my children that I love them. This is their phone number. Her name's Janine and he's coughing can hardly make out the smoke. He said, there's so much smoke in my, uh, the floor is getting so hot. I really want you to, here's my number. Repeat it back to me. Repeat the number back so you can call my wife when all this is done. He tells her that he loves her. He tells her that he's, he's, he's thinking of her and um, that he's going to be okay. Well, a month later when they're digging through the rubble still, they find his body. Al's body was one of the ones that they found it. And his body's intact, too, which is a, a, an amazing thing if you remember September 11th. Then. But all that said of him, because he acted upon being a disciple of Jesus, right? As tough as it was today, the, the normal way uh, to broadcast, to say God's message is by preaching. That's the way God's always done it. Well, you, you know, no, it, it's really not about the church and one guy up here behind a, a pulpit. It's done with you as you deploy and go into the highways and byways of your workplaces. And, and as you do stuff in your neighborhood, as you reach your neighbor for Jesus, there'll be opportunities probably for you to lead Bible studies for children, for youth, maybe even adults one day. But more so it's done in the mission field that God has you in. God has planted each of us in strategic places of our work field. That's our mission field. That's the place that we drive our families, right, everybody? 
following Jesus, it changes our head. It changes our heart. And following Jesus changes our hands and what we do, the mission of God. Right, everybody? Do you receive the Word of God? Will you obey the Word of God? Yes, we will. We'll obey the Word of God today, our Savior, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Let, let's pray together right now. Heavenly Father, we, we stand, we, 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 we still ourselves at this very moment and we close our eyes and we thank you, Heavenly Father, that we're in your presence. And you're in this place as a believer, but you want to graduate today. You want to follow Jesus. There's a head, a head change right now, a dedication in your heart. I'm thinking different. I uh, will follow, and Jesus said, then I'm going to make you right now. I'm making you. Something's changing in your heart. You had that heart of stone, and God is making a heart that's tender, a heart of flesh today, a heart for people. You have a burden right now for people around you. There's a transformation, and you're acting upon it today. Thank you, Lord. And then he says, I'll make you fishers of men today. The heart changed. You participate. You serve. If you're coming up short in any area right now that I just described as a Christian, as a believer, even as a follower, passive follower of Jesus, go all in right now. If that's you, would you lift your hand on the screen in the sanctuary right now? Just lift a hand. Say, that's me, me. I, I've been challenged. I need some things changed in my life. Thank you, Jesus. We do this before a holy but loving God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. You spoke to me this week. This 21-day fast. I must decrease and you must increase. There's prayers like that happening if your hands lifted. And thank you at this point, Lord, of accountability before the people of God. Thank you, Lord. More of Jesus, Lord. Make me a forgiving man, God. Change my heart, Lord. Just like you did some of the men, Lord, that testified earlier. Thank you, Father. Above all else, Lord, there's kingdoms of this world. There's my kingdom, God, but Lord, may it bow before yours, Lord. May it not even be a kingdom, God. I steward it. It's yours, Lord. Thank you, Father. All the gifts, Lord. I give you my family, Lord. I give you everything I own, Lord. You do the same right now. It's all yours, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Leverage it for the kingdom. Thank you, Lord. I hear the Lord say right now, over all of us that are giving things over that are materialistic right now. God's saying, you know what? I love you enough right now. Whatever your name might be right now. I love you enough. You insert your name. I'm going to give it back to you. Would you steward, steward it well? Take care of it. It's mine. Take care of that money. Take care of that car. It's mine. Take care of it. Manage it well. Take care of the calling that you have, the talents and the ability. Take care of it. It's mine. God owns it right now. He gives you right now. You, you can borrow it, but take care of it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. As I continue to pray right now, you're far away from God. Maybe you believed in God and you believe things of God, but even the demons believe, the Bible says, and they shudder. Right now, would you take right now a step towards Jesus? A step towards Jesus is just lifting your hand and saying, I must be born again. I must come back to the fires of God to once I once followed Jesus. I turned away. Now I'm coming back. You've never said yes to Jesus. Are you grown cold to the things of God? You want to say yes to Jesus. I need Jesus in my life. Would you lift your hand right now and say, that's me. I want to include you in a prayer. God bless you. Yes. About four or five of you. Yes. You, you did this before God. Let's put our hands down right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. When Jesus said, follow me, symbolically, those men and women, they left everything and they followed him. They abandoned everything. They saw their families, yes, and they were in relationship with people, but Jesus was the priority. And as that act, as you lifted your hand, and at living faith, you never pray alone. But we, uh, you might say, well, I don't want to be embarrassed. I'm not going to call you to the front. I'm going to ask you right now to stand. But you know what? I'm going to stand with you right now. Would you stand if you meant it right now? If you lifted your hand. But I'm going to stand. And how many brothers and sisters in this room will stand with them right now? You're not going to stand alone at Living Faith Church. Yeah, amen. You did it. You did it. Yeah, you stood up. The prayer on the screen right now. 
I'll pray it something like this. You can look at it, but we can all pray it even on the screen right now as you're watching on Facebook, on YouTube, on our website. We pray this prayer. Say this with me. Dear God in heaven, forgive me of my sins. Jesus washed away all my sins on the cross. He took them all, all my wrong, all my shame, all my filthiness, and he cleansed me, and he removed all my sin. Thank you that I'm a new creation in Christ. I have a new beginning. I am born again. I change my ways. I follow after the master. Jesus is Lord of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Come on, angels are partying right now. They're going, yeah, we can do that too. Yes, Lord. Now, there are about four or five of you here in the sanctuary. I want you to go to the Welcome Center, and we don't do a high-pressure thing. We don't. But we want to make sure that you take away this book. It's called the New Believer's Handbook. It's a wonderful Bible study book, and you can have it. You can write in it. It's a, it's a way to seek God for these next few weeks, especially during this 21-day fast. You get that free. I believe there'll be a, a great man, a woman of God right at that table. I'm calling them in to be there, and we'll have that book available for you. If you're on the screen right now, you can go ahead and order this and uh, get it. You, there's ways to contact us. You'll see all the ways to do that. You can have that book free. We'll mail it to you to make sure that you have it today. And so we want to bless the tithe and the offering as we're committed to this. And did you want to play a song as we dismiss today? And so there'll be a song risen up and um, um, that we sing together as we give today. Amen. So it's offering time, tithe time. Amen. And uh, amen. Thank you, God. Yes. Yeah, you can clap. Get happy about the giving today. Amen. We need, our, we need, we need practice back, right, everybody? And, and so we, with our tithe right now, we say this. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. And may the Lord give you his peace. Thank God. Amen. God bless you, living faith. Amen. Let's celebrate the Lord in our giving. God bless you, living faith.